We're here today with what could be the most spacey and out of this world looking people mover on the market. That is the Hyundai Staria. This model that we're reviewing today is the Highlander edition. We do have a little bit of ambient noise today, but that's fine. We'll get through it. Uh, the council's got to do what they've got to do where we are. Look, it is a polarizing front end on this car. The design, let's be honest, it's a box. It has to carry a ton of people in it. Not much you can do in terms of styling and shaping. Hyundai's done a really good job at actually making something that looks completely different to a lot of the cars on the market uh, in the current segment, adding a ton of value uh, and also being a much more competitive offering than all of its competitors. So we're excited to show you through the car. Um, starting at the front, You've got this really nice LED light bar that goes the whole way across the front of the bonnet. Uh, you do have basically a, a pretty smooth front end as well as the front camera system. The car has a 360 degree camera system uh, which we'll show you on the interior and that the camera is uh, placed at the front on the side mirrors and at the rear. So you're going to have plenty of visibility despite its big size. It drives really, really easily uh, and you've, you're never without um, a good view of what's happening around you. Uh, front parking sensors are standard. You have your LED headlights and uh, light design all down the bottom there, similar to what's on the Palisade. Um, and look, if, you, if, you, if you're after a little bit more space than what's available in the Palisade uh, as a larger SUV, definitely from a space point, this outclasses everything um, that's in the standard SUV offerings and keeps up with um, what's out there in the van markets as well. Engine-wise, you're looking at a 2.2-litre turbo diesel. Uh, it is a good for 130 kilowatts of power, 430 newton meters of torque. Uh, because it is the diesel, as mentioned previously, it is a all-wheel drive only, uh, which is super solid and steady on the road. It's covered by Hyundai's five-year unlimited kilometer warranty and cap price servicing. And this is the second time we've actually had this car. The first time we focused on more of a road trip uh, type review, I put about 1500 Ks on the car. It's really good on fuel. So usually about 800 to 900 Ks out of one tank. Um, but second to that, it's really, really comfortable on the highway and plenty of power for the 2.2 liter engine choice that they've got in this car. So you're never gonna be without power or without the confidence to overtake or just tackle some of the steeper slopes. 18 inch alloy wheels are standard on this car and being a starrier, they're even somewhat starry in design. So continues with the Staria theme and the uniqueness of the overall profile. As you can see, massive profile uh, from the side. It is super roomy from a headroom perspective, as you can expect. And it has keyless entry as well. So whether it's the back door or the front door, you're gonna have keyless entry. You can keep your keys in your pocket, your handbag, wherever it's gonna be to get in and out nice and easily and to lock it as well, nice and easily as well. Talking about interior quality and materials. so. With the doors, it's probably the one area where they've done a good job by using darker plastic materials to give it the impression that it may be a more premium finish and added some of these design cues in terms of uh, the lining in that center. However, they are still pretty harsh plastics. Um, this car is still based off a commercial van, so you're always gonna have um, you know, a little bit of a difference in the material quality, say for, you know, compared to a uh, Hyundai Palisade, for example, which has a much higher um, material grade. Uh, however, thankfully, it only stops at the doors. Once you get inside, premium to the, to the nines. So um, I like how it's got a little bit of storage in a number of different areas, plus a grab handle up here. So you can store your phone or any keys or anything up here. You can store some more down here massive tub down here to store whatever you need to down there um, plus a little bit of storage at the top here should you have any coins or anything else that you want to store there all your power window controls and mirror controls are all located in the same usual spots um, and on the inside here is where you have your electronic park brake your four-wheel drive lock system because this is an all-wheel drive system uh, in the 2.2 liter diesel the petrol does get a uh, front wheel drive uh, sorry a two-wheel drive um, system uh, stability control button and your heated steering wheel and your light stabilization and leveling uh, controls are all there as well. But let's take a look at the rest of the car. The Staria has a really spacious interior. Um, 
From a digital point, it has a digital information display for the driver directly in the line of sight. So it's well positioned, although it's kind of a bit weird in that it's not embedded into the actual uh, you know, dash. So it doesn't take any getting used to, which is great. It just is a little bit of a, a quirky design. Uh, that being said, part of that reason is there's a storage compartment just here. So if you have your phone or you have anything else, you can store it there. On the other part of the dash, you have another storage compartment where you can keep another phone if you need to. Bottle holder at the top here, um, and then you've got some additional cup holders in the center. On your screen over here, what you have is your uh, USB um, driven Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So once the USB cable is actually plugged in, you will plug your phone in, and your phone not only will start charging, but it will allow the Apple CarPlay to sit in here as well. Going on with that is if you have another phone for your passenger or anyone else and you need to charge it wirelessly, it does have wireless charging located just there. Part of the reason that Apple CarPlay is not wirelessly charged, um, is not wireless in operation on the uh, Hyundai range. Now that being said, the wired connection tends to be a lot more stable in a lot more cars uh, than the wireless uh, connection, but also provides a better quality of um, audio as well. So for the music lovers, you're probably gonna want it plugged in anyway and have a nice level of audio. Uh, this big display here, it's 10.25 inch and it's super responsive and throughout the Hyundai range, we actually see this unit being used um, especially in the top models. And I've got to be honest, it's one of my favorite infotainment units on the market at the moment because it's a really crisp, clear display, but it also has a nice amount of um, uh, responsiveness. So uh, over on this side of things here as well, uh, your CarPlay functions from there, but you also have this cool passenger view uh, camera system. So once that's on, as you can see, our videographer is in the back filming this but you'll be able to keep an eye out on all of your kids or passengers in the back to make sure that if anyone's uh, disembarking, they can get in and out safely. Uh, or if you've got kids uh, that maybe are a little bit cheeky and tend to take their seatbelts off, uh, you'll be able to keep an eye on to make sure that they have their seatbelt on. It is single zone climate control for the front, and then you have another uh, zone of climate control in the rear. Uh, this is in part because this is a commercial van uh, based platform so usually in the commercial van you're not going to have two zones of climate control uh, so that is one thing that is a little bit different to some of its competitors however it's super easy to function and use because all the buttons that you need are directly on here two other things that i like about the front seats is that you have heated and ventilated seat controls as well for the driver and the passenger so in summer you can have a little bit of ventilation coming through the seat uh, and in winter, you're gonna have a, a nice amount of heating to keep you nice and toasty. Rear parking sonar is controlled through here, as well as your camera system. And as you can see, it's a crisp, clear display for your reverse camera, and it has your guide, um, your moving guidelines as well. So you'll always be able to see where you're gonna be going based on where you're pointing the steering wheel. You have a bird's eye view over here for the 360 display. Being that it's such a large van, it will help you center your parking bay and also make sure that you've got plenty of room. Up the top here, you do have your controls. Um, they will do your two moon roofs, uh, your, your panoramic roof and your sunroof, sorry, I should say, all your map lights, as well as opening and closing the side doors and opening and closing the rear door. You can also deactivate that rear power door as well, should you need to. Um, and all your lighting and everything is all through here as well, once you press all that. Um, so all in all, it's fitted out really, really well, and you have a really nice design for the dash. It is, uh, the car does come with privacy glass, uh, which will do a little bit of uh, a good job at that, but if you really want to keep uh, some of the heat and sun out, definitely need a little bit more um, darkness to the windows. Now, in the back of the Staria, there are a lot of convenience features which, has been, um, which have been designed to make it a little bit more livable in the back if you're a passenger or a child. Down the bottom here, you have a little bit of storage where you can keep basically whatever you need to. Two USB ports that you will never be able to plug a USB cable in correctly the first time. A little storage net just over here so that you can keep your phone in while you're charging or a storage pocket so that you can keep your tablet in while you're charging. Plus two cup holders that drop down here so that you can keep whatever you need to um, nice and secure over here. In the doors, you also get some bottle holders as well, uh, which make it really convenient. At the top here, there is a little bit of a uh, hidden 
uh, secret. It is a camera and a camera system, which Hyundai calls the passenger view camera system. That will allow your driver to keep an eye out on the kids in the back, make sure seat belts are on, uh, or if you're loading and unloading passengers, it will also allow you to be able to see if everyone's out or in before you close the doors and start driving. Uh, so a really handy and convenient feature to just make sure everyone's safe in the back. Air conditioning vents throughout the, the middle row as well, and your climate control settings, which we mentioned earlier, uh, to make sure that you either stay nice and toasty in winter or nice and cool in summer. A little bit more lighting in the middle, and that panoramic roof certainly allows for a lot more uh, natural light to come into the, the cabin. Middle row. So if you're in the back seat, you're gonna have a tremendous amount of space and you're gonna be super comfortable. Legroom abounds. The front seat is actually pushed back the whole way back. So regardless of how tall or how much distance you want from the steering wheel, there's still a lot of space behind that middle seat. So as I um, will point out with the third row, um, there is a bit of flexibility in how it can be set up. So if you wanna sit a little bit closer to the front to allow a little bit more cargo carrying space or a little bit more storage in the back, uh, or legroom for people in the back, you can actually have these seats at the furthest point forward that they'll click into, which is here. Still allows plenty of legroom while still allowing plenty of legroom for whatever's in the back um, as well. And you, each of the side windows also have a little bit of netting so that you can open and close the blind to keep some of that sun out of your face as well. Although privacy glass is standard in this car, so you're gonna already have a small reduction in the actual um, amount of reflection on your face from the sun on longer drives. Third row, what's the comfort levels like? Well, as an adult, I'm pretty comfortable. I'm sitting in the middle seat, so if you had three people along the back as adults, you would actually be quite comfortable. My knees are touching this middle row, but that's only because I've got the middle row the whole way back. As you can see from this side, it actually goes forward quite a distance. So you could move it slightly forward and still have plenty of room in the middle to then have plenty of room in the rear. You can tilt this seat back seat back should you need to to be a little bit more comfortable. And some creature comforts in the back to keep the sun out. So you've got this blind system up here. The windows do pop out as well. And you've got some USB chargers on both sides to keep all your devices charged. Plenty of cup holders and storage pockets. And you've got some air conditioning vents in the roof of the car as well plus this beautiful big panoramic roof that sits above the, the middle row and the third row, and a separate sunroof in the front for the front row as well. So all you have a massive, massive tailgate. So it's actually the whole back of this car. It is electronically controlled. So opening it up in car parks, you just need to be mindful that this car is gonna open up a little bit longer. As you can see, I'm a fair distance from the back of the car, and this is actually quite close. So. You're just gonna to have to be mindful. The big advantage to this, however, is the rear load space is actually really, really low. So if you're loading heavy items like your prams, your strollers, suitcases, whatever it might be, you're not gonna to have to be lifting up and over a ridge. Uh, so it'll save your back and make it a little bit easier as well. Uh, if you've got any pups uh, or you know any kind of animals that are gonna come with you, unless you're fitting a cow or a horse in here, you should be pretty good at getting them in and out without too much pain for them as well. Tower light design as well before we move around. Uh, it is really funky and really cool. It's seen similar on the Ionic 5 uh, from Hyundai. Uh, so you have this little cube design. So once again, just trying to be a little bit different, which is a great thing. Electronic tailgate is programmable. So if you are a little bit too short to reach at full extension, or maybe your garage is a little bit too low in the ceiling, uh, you can actually pull this down a little bit and push and hold the button until it clicks a couple of times. Once it, once it beeps, now it's programmed to only open and close to this height, uh, and obviously closing the normal way that it would. And to reset it, you can just push this back up and push and hold on this again, and it will reset to that height. So at least you've got a bit of pro flexibility in the programming height for this. So if you are a bit shorter or you've got a low um, hanging ceiling, you're gonna be pretty right. Okay, so moving on to how much stuff you can fit in the back and carry. <laughs> well, it's safe to say that this is possibly one of the roomiest people movers on the market where you can have a full complement of adults in the back on all three rows 
and still have a tremendous amount of space in the rear uh, to load suitcases, prams, strollers, shopping, whatever your heart desires, maybe your emotional baggage. Whatever you want to do, it can fit in the Hyundai Staria. Yeah. Now, it has a massive load compartment. However, because of its reduced height in the floor, as you can see, it means that these seats, the way that they need to fold is flat on top, but they don't fold flat into the floor. So if you're planning to carry any longer oversized items, they will have to sit on top of this. The great part is you can adjust that row backwards and forwards as you need to be able to fit as much as you can. Um, so it's still versatile while still giving you a few constraints being the type of van that it is. However, in this segment, all of the vans on the market will be doing basically the same thing. One other thing to note as well, as you can see, because the floor is so low, there's no actual lift up area for the spare tire. Spare tire is actually located under the car and there's a little round dial that's just there that will lower the wheel down for you so that you can slide it out and swap them over should you need to uh, swap your tire off from a puncture or anything like that. Um, lighting available in the back of the car and you've got some blinds on the sides here that will lift up. Uh, and you've also then got a tremendous amount of cup holders and USB ports so that everyone can keep their stuff charged. Cool. And while we've commented that it has a tremendous amount of rear load space here with everyone in the car, if you don't need the third row for something and you do need to carry a little bit more baggage or cargo, what you can do is you can flick this button up here. This will push up the middle base uh, of the third row and then this handle just allows you to push this the whole way forward and basically double the amount of load space that you have available for anything in the rear. So really versatile rear end and really handy from Hyundai to have designed it this way to make it as useful for families or commercial purposes uh, as you need. And if you're in the back seat of the van, generally speaking, you have missed out on having a window. However, in the Staria, peekaboo! There's a window for you, as well as a convenient net to keep some of the sun out while allowing some of the air into the back. So if you're a parent, you can have your baby seat in the back, maybe a little bit of ventilation coming in through the window while still keeping the sun off the little one's face without having to have one of those awful big blankets flapping around in the wind like most parents have. I know what you're, what you're thinking and I know you know what I'm talking about if you are a mum and dad with a young child. All right. So there you have it guys. The Hyundai Staria is definitely a car that I would recommend for you to go out and have a look at and explore. Uh, certainly the Highlander offers a tremendous amount of value for money. It's around mid 60s uh, plus on road costs, uh, depending on the state you're in, should level you out around 70 grand. Uh, compared to a lot of its competitors, that's a really, really reasonable and affordable price point, especially when you have a look inside and consider exactly what you're getting for that money. Um, take it for a drive. Let us know in the comments if you like it. Let us know how you plan to use it. Are you using it as a commercial vehicle? Are you using it for your family? Do you own one? If you own one, let us know how your experience with the Staria is going so far. But I reckon this is possibly one of the best value for money vans on the market that not only has a ton of features, but drives it ex exceptionally well and is possibly even the next step above a lot of its competitors. So take one for a drive. We'll see you in the next video. And as always, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep bringing you more and more of these videos on a more frequent basis. Uh, and if there's anything you'd like us to review, just leave it in the comments and we'll try to get it and organize it for you.